see all of you uh, here for our tip-off lunch and luncheon because that means we're going to tip it off pretty soon. Uh, the most important thing as far as I'm concerned right now and, and the most exciting thing is we started practice. And we uh, started to try to bring bring our unit uh, you know, together. Uh, we've got probably three short-term goals and that's to really good defensive team, which includes gang rebounding, uh, to become a, a, a dangerous running team, and then, uh, you know, beat your guard and state. Those are the things that we focus on in the, uh, in the short term. Uh, in the long term, uh, we just want to get better you know, every single day. But of course, of the uh, season, we want to win as many games as we possibly can, and uh, we love to play in postseason play. Those are kind of our long-term goals as uh, we sort of started practice here. Obviously, long-term stuff seems an awful long time away, and that's the way it should be. We've got to focus on each and every day uh, getting better. And uh, when we do get better from one day to the next, uh, you know, it really makes you feel good. But then that's tempered because you realize how far uh, we've got to go. With, uh, obviously, you haven't approached your first game, but being in the Big East, and it's such a monster league. I mean, have you talked to the kids at all about that? Because obviously, theoretically, it could swallow you guys up. You know, if, if you guys, you know, if you get a little tentative or a little afraid that, you know, you're playing all these teams, you can win all these other leagues. Well, I have talked to our guys about the Big East. I was at the Big East Media Day uh, last week. And, uh, you know, told the guys that, uh, you know, we were, were picked at the bottom. I sense there was a, you know, a little smirking and some snickering going on when, when our name uh, was mentioned. And uh, I, I, I personally, uh, that bothers me. Uh, I take offense to it, not only for myself personally, but for our team. Uh, but having said that, uh, we have an opportunity to do something about that before. Not anytime soon. Uh, that's certainly something that, uh, uh, you know, we're going to remember. And, uh, that's there. Those other voices are there. It's up to us to prove them all. I see us uh, being a balanced team. Uh, practically every good team that I've had has been a balanced offensive team. So I think that's a product of our, of our system and uh, in, in the way we play. And by that, I mean uh, the right way to play is to share the basketball, hit the open man. So the defense oftentimes determines uh, who's going to have a good shot. But it's important for us to discern what is a good shot, a high percentage shot, and, and get a bunch of those during the course of the game. And hopefully our running game will always do that. We come from the conference's last two national champions to the Big East now. What do you think are the main differences between ACC and the Big East? Uh, more good teams, uh, more great teams, both great leagues. A lot more teams, uh, as evidenced by the number of teams that uh, were invited to the NCAA tournament and the NIT. And I think it was something like 13 or something you know, like that. That's, that's a lot of good basketball teams. So I think that's the biggest difference. We only have 12 teams in the ACC. So we have 13 teams uh, that are good basketball teams. Is there a stylistic difference that you've noticed since, you know? I really haven't studied that much other than watching the ball games, obviously. Just like you guys, I watched you know, some Yankees basketball over the course of the year, but probably like you, I didn't watch a lot of total games uh, either. And so I didn't see a major difference. You know, there's a stylistic difference between probably most teams and us. So that's the way I kind of look at it. You know, we're a pressure offense and defensive team, and uh, there's not a lot of those teams you know, in the country. Just how, does the, how does the situation here compare to what you guys have got? Very similar. Very similar. Uh, the function was at the bottom of the ACC. So you're obviously building and you're obviously looking to get better and improve. And, uh, the bottom line is uh, you, know, you want to go from being in the bottom echelon to the top echelon in a great league. When you do that, you have more time to If you're in the top echelon of a great league, then you know, the sky is the limit. Just as you, you're renovating the style of play on the court, have you had to deal mentally with kind of renovating their thinking or make, making them believe in a different way? Oh, absolutely. Uh, you know, 
you always have to be that, just because my way of doing things in our system uh, requires a different mindset to start with. But, but obviously, when you have to be successful, uh, there's some things about you know, that mindset that uh, you want to get away from. What's what's specific to the style of play that the, mind, the mindset you just mentioned there? What? Well, I think uh, one of the biggest things uh, is how hard you have to play uh, you know, for 40 minutes and how hard you have to practice to be able to play that way. And, and that's not every style. And that's not, uh, you know, for, for example, you watch you know, the NBA play, obviously. You know, they're not sprinting up and down the court, pressing full court, that kind of thing. So their mindset, the mindset to play that game is different, it's just like you have different leagues that you talked about in college basketball and different styles of play. If you're a zone team, then you're used to drop back. And in the zone, if you're a half-court man-to-man team, then you don't run when the other team scores against you. It's not about whipping the ball right in and getting down the court. So there's a lot of differences in terms of your mental approach when you look at a different style of play, you look at a different league, you look at winning and losing. Who stood out to you in the first week and a half of practice? Uh, nobody really. I, the team is the, the, the thing that stood out to me is that these guys have tried to do everything they've asked them to do, and uh, I haven't had very many teams that have, have had that characteristic from the start. How important is conditioning when you talk about playing a good defense, but also being running on offense? Well, conditioning is obviously important. We're trying to ease our team into conditioning, into condition. Uh, we'll make sure that uh, we understand we want to be in great shape, but we don't want to wear our guys out too much early, uh, you know, as well. Losing Eric Wallace, we're one man down uh, already, uh, but we do have to get in you know, much better shape than we are today uh, in order to be ready for this game. At the beginning, is it important to get the best talent you possibly can? And then as years go on, you adapt all the players and bring people into your style? Or do you start from scratch and say, these are the type of players that I want? Um, yeah, we're recruiting to our, our, our system. But at the same time, it's, it's, it's about getting uh, you know, athletes that fit your system, but also the people that fit your system. Uh, we just talked about how important the mental approach is. Uh, and there are guys that uh, you can buy into a uh, team-oriented system uh, that can really buy into a single minded this purpose. The guys that you know, guard and, 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 and like that. The guys that believe in feet family team and, and all this and that's really important for How about when, when you first when you first were hired, a lot of the, the local high schools that the coaches came in and said, well he's not welcome to our team, we wanted Tracy Webster. What do you make of that then? How do you go about getting a connection those coaches. Well, I didn't see a lot of high school coaches saying that I saw a few, a yeah, a couple of them. There's a big difference between yeah. a few and a couple and a lot. Uh, and, uh, you know, I don't think you can, you know, let a few naysayers stop you from doing anything. And my approach uh, has always been you go out and you meet people and uh, you develop relationships and, and, and let people judge for themselves. You know, we've had some success to uh, getting some guys committed from the Chicago area. And I think it's mainly because we really had to work hard at it. And by and large, I found that most coaches, uh, the majority, vast majority, have been receptive and, and 